my dear Hans. Hello. I want to call you Mr. Rosenfeld. I've known you for too long. Yes. I've been in auto seit Jahren. Um, dear Hans, how are you after all these months of Corona? Wie geht es dir? Uh, I'm good, actually. I mean, it hasn't affected me that much. I'm, I'm in my office. I have my own office. Uh, I live close to the office, so I can walk over there. And, you know, Sweden, we haven't really had any lockdowns or... So things are, for me, quite good. Could be much, much worse, but writing and, and publishing books are actually, yeah, it's been working quite well for me. And I'm not that worried personally either. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm remarkably good, I'd say. Gott sei Dank ist Hans Rosenfeld gut drauf. Schweden hatte ja eine ganz andere Art, mit dem Lockdown umzugehen oder auch mit Corona. Ihm geht's gut und seinem Büro in der Nähe. And I think writing is anyway a sort of lonely business where you sit in an ivory tower and you don't have to meet people all day long. That's an advantage now, isn't it? It is. It has been an advantage now. And, and even when I'm allowed to meet people, you know, you know I try to avoid it. So... Uh, <laughs> So it's been, it's been actually, it's been an okay spring for me and summer. It really has. Also Gott sei Dank hat der Autor den Sommer gut überstanden und man weiß ja, Schreiben ist ein einsames Geschäft und für Autoren nicht so schlimm. And I'm happy at least you have a wonderful companion in your room, the elephant. <laughs> the elephant is, yeah. One, one, uh, one of the walls in, um, in my office is, is uh, floor to ceiling, that elephant. It's very nice, isn't it? It's wonderful. Er hat ein Elefant als Begleiter. Yeah. It's a thing of beauty. Dear Hans, it's now the first time that you've been writing, you've written a book, a novel as a single person. You've written, of course, scripts before. You did a lot for television under your own name. But we know you together with your friend and colleague. And now you started your own career with this well, with this book, which I guess is not a standalone, but how is it now to be all on yourself and write a novel all for yourself, all alone, so to say? I was really looking forward to it because it, it would be a new thing for me. And I thought I, thought I would really like it. Uh, then I started and I still kind of liked it. And then, you know, you, you get into these, uh, you get into the bumps in the road and then I realized, oh, I don't have anyone to talk to about this. I don't have anyone to kind of ask for advice or discuss the, the future of this, this character or this strand or this. So then, then I felt very lonely and I also kind of started to doubt, oh, maybe I need to work together with someone. So it was, um, it was uh, exciting at first, really difficult in the middle, and then I kind of get a hang of it and then I enjoyed it again at the end. Ganz kurz, Hans Rosenfeld ist ja berühmt dafür, dass er mit seinem Kollegen zusammen wunderbare Bücher geschrieben hat, mit Sebastian, einem schwierigen Helden in der Mitte. Jetzt hat er das erste Mal einen Roman alleine geschrieben. Nicht ganz einfach, vor allem, weil man jemanden hat, mit dem man sich austauschen kann, aber am Schluss hat er es dann doch genossen. A wonderful book, very exciting and I thought it's so exciting because you have a, a setting which is very unusual, which is very far from anywhere, called Haparanda. And yeah. I thought reading the book, Haparanda is a person. Is that also to you? He's a, he, the village is a character to you. Yes, I decided to, I did, for me, I did a, a, quite an extensive research and I was up there. It's very far north, northeast, the farthest further east you can come in Sweden. You're very, very close, just on the border to Finland. And uh, so I did extensive research and uh, visited it quite a few times. And then I realized I need to kind of embody her, I, I call it her, uh, mm. in some way. So yes, she became a character. She became um, a kind of a, a kind of a sleeping god or a Greek choir or something, you know, seeing and knowing things, but she can't, she can't interact. She just, she just has to watch things happen. Der Roman spielt in einem ganz abgelegenen Ort oben an der finnischen Grenze, Haparanda, und für den Autor, für Hans, ist das Ganze wie eine 
Person, wie eine schlafende Gottheit. Haparanda spielt eine Rolle, aber kann sich nicht in die Handlung einmischen, sondern ist einfach da, ist aber wie ein Charakter in dem Buch. Which is a great thing. Actually, did you get the idea for your novel while visiting Haparanda in seeing this very remote village in the northeast? No, I actually, I had the idea of putting it there before. Uh, I, the first time when I went up to, to, to visit it, I already knew this was where I was, this is where I wanted to be. I, I visited it uh, about 10 years ago um, for a couple of days and can't say I really remembered much, but when I, um, when I, when I was thinking about a setting for my first book, I was thinking, hmm, Haparanda, it's, um, not many books has been written about Haparanda. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I just don't know one, uh, which is a Swedish kind of classic, but otherwise Haparanda is, um, it feels kind of exotic, I think, even for Swedes. Mm. Also das Buch ist schon sozusagen als Idee vorhanden gewesen. Hans ist vor Jahren in Haparanda gewesen und er hat sich dann diesen Ort ausgesucht, denn keiner hat bisher über diesen Ort geschrieben, der wirklich am Ende der Welt liegt, aber ein spannender Ort ist. It's, um, I saw a short sort of film, I think you talked about Haparanda, and it's yeah. really, it's like in the wild, wild west, one of those forgotten little towns. So, but you have a police station there, you have people yes. living there. So did you have to invent all that or is it still in Haparanda? It's, it's, still still in Haparanda. it's not that small. It's mm -hmm. uh, about 9,000 inhabitants mm -hmm. and it has a police station. It's, it's not, it's not uh, manned. Uh, around the clock. It's like open nine to three, uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, the, the, the closest big station is about one and a half hour car away. Um, so it is remote, but it's, 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 very, it's a very functioning small town or, or city. Uh, and it also has, uh, as if you read the book, you know, it's the, it has the further north, the most northern placed IKEA store in the world. So it's, uh, there's quite a few people coming to Haparanda, uh, if not um, at least to shop. Also Haparanda ist nicht so ein verlassener Ort, wie man gedacht hätte von einigen Bildern, die es gibt, sondern es hat auch eine Police, äh, Polizeistation, die allerdings jeden Tag nach bestimmten Stunden arbeitet. Es hat 9000 Einwohner und es hat vor allem den nördlichsten Ikea-Laden von Europa, muss man sagen. Also ganz was Erstaunliches und Besonderes. You But said then, the it's, idea, I'm sorry. it's very close to nature. I mean, you just have to step outside and then it's this vast, empty, you know, forests and the lakes and the, and the, and the river. And it's, 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 you don't have to go far to be in very, very wild uh, northern nature, which is amazing. <laughs> Also man ist schon mitten in der Natur, wichtig für den Roman. It's very important for your novel because you have a lot of nature in the book, the forest where people die and uh, a body is found and uh, yeah. I want to say how he died, but very exciting. So while writing, did sort of nature and the place itself have an influence on your writing, although you had the idea before that? I think, uh, yes, coming up there, I think you could... You, you kind of get into another pace, I think. You get another tempo in your body when you're up there. And I also think that living there is, is another pace. The, the different uh, times of year is much more vivid there. There is months of complete darkness. There is months where it's never dark. So it's, um, I mean, it, that affects uh, even the inhabitants. Uh, up there so and nature i think is it's good because there is there is a distance between people you know everywhere you go you go for quite a big distance and if you want to you don't have to see another person for well as long as you want so i think it is even though i not address it directly i think you know there's a, there's a flavor of it throughout the book just by placing it there also das Buch hat schon die Atmosphäre dieser Natur und des Ortes sehr übernommen, denn es ist ein einsamer Ort mitten in der Natur und die Menschen müssen sich nicht sehen, muss ich sagen, in Corona-Zeiten geradezu ideal, man wird sich kaum anstecken, aber natürlich spielt diese Atmosphäre eine wichtige Rolle im Roman und vor allem auch der Rhythmus der Menschen, natürlich mit der Natur eng verbunden. Now the dark age sort of starts, we have end of September, I guess now the yeah. long dark months begin, which is a horror, horror idea, I must say. Yeah. 
<laughs> terrible and now uh, yeah no, you know that's also it's kind of but because pretty soon if uh, starting in november you get the snow mm -hmm. so you that kind of even and then you get well the lights from the from the street lights on the houses and i mean the snow is helping and mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not it's not as bad as it sounds to be in complete darkness for a couple of months. It's it's really not. Der Schnee hilft Gott sei Dank die dunklen Monate etwas heller zu machen. Was sehr spannend ist, in dem Mittelpunkt dieses Romans stehen zwei hochinteressante Frauen. It's interesting in you know the focus in this book there are several interesting male characters, but especially two women, Hannah and Katja. And yes. those two women are fascinating. I, we're not allowed to um, portray anything about them, but um, how did you have the idea to put two women in the middle of your book and have them as the, well, the hero and the anti-hero? Uh, well, the first, uh, I have written uh, quite a lot about women lately, uh, <laughs> but on the TV side. Uh, then when I decided to do this, I thought I should try to separate my own book as much as I can from what me and Michael are, are writing. So then I thought, okay, so we have a male protagonist. Let's, when I write, let's have a female protagonist, and that is Hannah then. And then I needed, uh, well, there's a few more um, antagonists, but Katja is the biggest one or anti-hero. Uh, and she just became a she because the thing she does and the person that she is, I just think it's funnier that that is a woman uh, than a man. Mm -hmm. I think the, the kind of thing that she is capable of is more fun to read uh, when a woman is doing them and then the man is doing them. It's as simple as that. That's, that's true, but it's fascinating. And auch natürlich hat Hans Rosenfeld zusammen schon mit, auch mit seinem Kollegen über Männer geschrieben. Er selber schreibt viel über Frauen. Seine Drehbücher, vor allem in englischem Fernsehen, sind oft über Frauen. Aber der Reiz war, dass er jetzt mit seinem sozusagen ersten Single-Book, wie ich das nennen möchte, starke Frauen in den Mittelpunkt stellt. Und dass er, Hanna ist Polizistin und Katja die Gegenspielerin. Und es ist viel spannender, dass sie eine Frau ist und kein Mann ist für die Dinge, die sie machen. How much of a challenge was it to, um, you know, to invent these two women that are very different in many ways, but very similar in other ways, because they're very energetic and they really focused. They are. Well, the fact is, when um, when I set it out, when I set out is to kind of build the story and then create the characters that I needed. Uh, it wasn't that hard at all. Um, Hannah is uh, came. Hannah came really easy to me, actually. Uh, I kind of understood her at once. Uh, I think she was probably one of the easiest character for me, uh, with the especially with my TV project with the Saga Norian in the in the bridge and uh, Marcella in in the in the Netflix show. I think I have kind of grown into them as one uh, while I was writing them. Uh, with Hannah, I was pretty, pretty. I was pretty clear with her. I kind of knew her when I started to write. So when things happened to her, I kind of knew. Oh, this is how she will react to this. This is what that will do to her. This is. So she was uh, remarkably easy, actually. She's um, she's very much uh, based on my wife. So maybe that's why. Uh, maybe that why it came so easy for me. Also Hanna war verhältnismäßig leicht als Figur für ihn zu en entwickeln. Er hat ja auch schon mehrfach wichtige große Frauen gestaltet in seinen Drehbüchern gehabt. Marcella zum Beispiel in England, eine tolle Serie, great stuff on Netflix. Und ähm, er hat sich leicht in diese Frau hineinversetzen können, vor allem da sie ein bisschen seiner eigenen Frau nachempfunden ist. What did your wife say when she discovered that Hanna is very much based on her? I think she, she just discovered that kind of... Uh a couple of days ago when I did a Swedish interview and I and I said that you know part of that is very much based on my wife and I don't think she really realized that she hasn't read the book yet so oh. um she doesn't know or well she did didn't know until then um I think it was just like I think that was kind of expected mm -hmm. uh, you know I haven't based much on her and I realized I, th I think she thought that yeah well it has to happen sooner or later so why not I think she's glad she became the hero of the story and, and uh, not Katja, really. Ha. Ja, die yeah. Ehefrau hat spät erfahren, dass sie überhaupt das Vorbild ist, erst vor wenigen Tagen. Und Gott sei Dank ist sie ja das Vorbild für eigentlich die gute 
Person, obwohl I think Hannah is fascinating because she's ambivalent. She's not just a good person, but she has sort of a dark side as well, and that makes her fascinating. So, I mean, your wife can be very proud. <laughs> she, <laughs> <based> thank you. <laughs> no, she is too. Hannah is. She's kind of. She's. She's a little bit rough around the edges, uh, mm. and she's very direct. Yeah. And uh, she's no. So that's uh, no. I, I mean, that's what. That's what interesting characters are, aren't they? I mean, they're a little bit. There are more. There are more. There are more layers to them than than you. I mean, one, two, three. You just try to make them three dimensional, basically. Uh, so they have to have something kind of dark to them. Also Hannah is one of these interesting women figures, who is very ambivalent, has very many good qualities, has also a few dark sides, and that means coming to Katya, you know, the other woman who is absolutely uh, while well, she's um, the dark side, more or less. And how was it to create her? She's a tragic was, character in itself. It, but it's a tragic character. I mean, she she never ever. I mean, she she had never had any chance to be something else than who she is. She was raised to be that person that she is, and there was no other road for her ever to to go. Yeah. And so, whether or not she actually enjoys it or likes it, it doesn't matter because this is who she is, and this is what she does. Uh, so, um, she. It, but I like I like the kind of backstory that we bring into her in this in this first book. We are going to to do um, and maybe that's a spoiler. Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> we are now nah, we are going to dig more into that dig later in the series. But um, so uh, no, but I think she's fascinating because she doesn't reflect much mm. on what she's doing. She's uh, because she is, as I said, she's she's a trained killing machine. That's what she is. And that's, uh, and we know more about perhaps how she came to be that than she does. Uh, and I think that it's that it's fun that it's giving a kind of redeeming character that this is not, she's not doing this because she's specifically fond of or think it's fun. She's doing it because she know, knows absolutely nothing else. Katja ist so faszinierend, weil sie ist eigentlich eine Killermaschine, aber spannend ist, warum wurde sie so? So viel Spaß dran hat sie nicht. Also sie ist eine sehr, sehr fesselnde Figur, aber ihre ganze Vergangenheit und all das, was sie erlebt hat, hat sie dazu gebracht. Wir werden da noch mehr erfahren. Im Buch erfährt man auch schon einiges. Um, so it's, uh, was it for you, when you started to write the book, was it actually you had these two female main characters and then you were sort of webbing your big net around them? Or how did you sort of, was the genesis of this story, which is a lot mm. about drugs and killers and Russian, Finnish, Swedish complications. Yeah. So how did it develop? I think it, yeah, it, it, I think it started, I, I'm not sure, which I probably should be, but I think it started more with the, the actual, the kind of crime, the first, mm -hmm. the, the crime and the thing that a lot of people, a lot of, of violent and uh, powerful people were chasing something uh, that the Swedish police also wanted to find. I think that was the kind of, and then I kind of knew who are the chasers. So it's um, so it's Hanna from the police side, and then it's Katya from the more from the more um, criminal side. And then I just kind of started figure, um, planting other characters who are basically all a bit. I mean, none of them is really making any good decisions throughout the book, which I thought was fun. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, it was more of, yes, these two trying to, chasing for the same goal, while other people is basically just trying to survive and make the best of their situation. So that is, uh, but um, yeah, the crime and the people who wanted to solve it for different reasons was the, the absolute first idea. Also das Buch basiert vor allem auf einer Grundgeschichte, dass sowohl die Polizei als auch die weniger sympathischen Menschen in der Gesellschaft etwas jagen, etwas versuchen zu bekommen und daraus entwickeln sich dann die Situationen und viele werden hineingezogen und alle haben sozusagen auch ihr Päckchen zu tragen, würde man auf Deutsch sagen, und vor allem machen auch viele falsche, falsche Entscheidungen. Um, and so the story really spreads from the forest into the thing and I think that you have a lot of very 
interesting ideas about your uh, protagonists. Some of them a bit reminded me of, was it Bullet, where the, the, the bad, uh, the, the criminal is so charming that everyone hopes he gets away with murder. So was that, because you're a film person as well, was that a bit in the back of your mind that not every criminal is so evil that he should be, well, punished? Or yeah. some people who make wrong decisions. I think we have that very much in, I think most of us writing uh, crime stories and, and crime fiction in Sweden have this kind of, we're born with the kind of, we need to understand, we don't need to accept the actions, but we need to understand the reasons behind why people are doing bad things. Um, and I, I think we, we are so, we were brought up with that um, for, for ages that you just you don't just have an evil person we don't really have the the full-blown psychopaths in swedish crime we try to give them a reason there is an underlying reason for why they are doing the crimes they are doing and uh, and yeah there's there's nothing different here i think that maybe is a little bit more outspoken with the the reasons for for them being into into criminal businesses uh because i've yeah, because I also wanted to to kind of fill Haparanda with very vivid living persons and not being more than one thing. Uh, because since I set it out to kind of put Haparanda on the crime map. <laughs> Nein, es ist noch spannend, weil natürlich die schwedische Tradition, die skandinavische Krimi-Tradition auch immer versucht, warum werden Leute so, wie sie sind, warum begehen sie Taten, aber nicht einfach Psychopathen, die sinnlos durch die Gegend laufen, um es mal salopp auszudrücken. Und natürlich ähm, ist das eine Tradition der skandinavischen Literatur, darum ist sie auch so erfolgreich. I think that's the reason why you're so successful in Germany, because you have these characters that are not just psychopaths running around with foaming mouths, but have more to them and have a yeah, soul. And the, and the good characters are not, you know, we don't, we don't really do the heroes and villains mm. kind of thing. We, we try to make them all blend into a kind of a gray area in the middle. How does how does that happen? Why is Scandinavian literature? I mean, the American literature goes other ways. They have a lot yeah. of psychopaths. The English literature is more like the Scandinavian. I think they always say, "Why did someone do it?" Like Val McDermott or P. D. James. But is yeah. it is it where does your tradition come from? The Scandinavian is it related to more the Anglo-Saxon relatives in Great Britain? I think it's. Uh, I, I think I just read a book about uh, uh, an interview book about Hjörv uh, Vale in the sixties that, that they that the ten novels they made uh, novels about a crime, and they were very. I mean, my Vale in an interview there, she says very uh, that that was they set out to kind of humanize criminals in that series, and that had such a huge impact on. Swedish crime writing, uh, which looked different before that. No. Uh, and that had such a huge impact. It was kind of a rule book uh, for many, many years. If you wanted to do Swedish crime, you needed that kind of ingredients that Shreval Valuable brought in. And then Henning Mankel mm -hmm. picked that up and kind of brought it further if 10, 15 years, 20 years. So it, it's, uh, it is a, just a we're, we're brought up to it and it, we're brought up with it. I think it's probably, yeah, I, I don't think it, we took it from the, from the English. I think actually it is a very Swedish way of writing crime um, and has become like the, that's how we do it um, in a kind of way. Yeah. Cheryl Wale ist natürlich so ein, ein Stichwort, die beiden Autoren, die den schwedischen Kriminalroman in den 60er Jahren sozusagen revitalisiert haben und geändert haben und Traditionen hineingebracht haben. Bisschen verwandt mit den Engländern, die weniger Psychopathen oft haben als die amerikanischen Verwandten. Und diese Tradition hat sich über Henning Mankell fortgesetzt und jetzt auch mit dir und anderen schwedischen Autoren. Das ist eine ganz andere Art, mit den, Krimi mit den Mördern, Verbrechern umzugehen. Sie sind Menschen und nicht nur Böse sozusagen. Sehr, sehr spannend. Um, what does it do with the readers? Because you're writing for a large audience, especially the German audiences love you, especially when you come on stage, everyone is happy. So yeah. why do you think that the Germans have this uh, strong relationship towards your sort of the, the Scandinavian way of describing murder and crimes? Um, oh, I think you should, you, you probably know that better than me, but uh, I'd say it's, well, we are good. We are good at creating we are good at creating characters that you, you want to, to spend time with. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're good at the crime part as well, but I think what the, the, the vast success is because we're good at creating character that people want to spend more time with. They want to find out what is happening next to them. They kind of build up a relationship with the, the characters. And then I also would like to think that because I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that we have been kind of idolized as a, as a kind of after the war, perfect society with a social net, with a social security net and, you know, and crime fiction is, they usually saying that everything is not as bright and happy and functioning and working and clean and nice as perhaps we would like to give the image uh, of to the rest of the world. Uh, and I think that is also a bit fascinating to see the kind of cracks in the cracks in the image, mm. uh, even though a lot of it, of course, is fictionalized. Natürlich, die äh, schwedischen ähm, Romane und auch die norwegischen, muss ich auch mal sagen, sind sehr erfolgreich in Deutschland, weil natürlich die Charaktere immer hochinteressant sind. Man möchte auch manch von ihnen länger, öfters über lange Zeiträume leben. Ähm, das ist ganz klar. Und natürlich, wir haben, sind aufgewachsen nach dem Krieg mit dem Ideal, Schweden ist das heile Land. Nein, es hat auch Schwächen, Fehler, was natürlich für uns in Deutschland spannend und faszinierend ist. Und äh, wir natürlich gerne auch lesen, dass die perfekte Gesellschaft nicht nur perfekt ist, aber trotzdem liebenswert, würde ich sagen. So, talking about your characters, Hannah is a, a woman one would like to meet. So I hope, because the story is not finished at the end of the book, you have a wonderful cliffhanger. So I do hope you go on, although you write in the in the afterword of it, we, we have to wait for a while to Hannah for Hannah to come back. But is that so? Is there no idea sequel next year? So I don't have to wait so long? <laughs> I'm sorry, no, because um, Michael and I just started uh, the seventh book uh, with uh, in the Sebastian Bergman series. Mm -hmm. So we deliver that by Christmas. Ah. And then I start writing the second book about Haparanda. So that will be out probably uh, early 22. Ah, yeah. But there will be a Sebastian Bergman in between. So, I mean, that's, Wonderful. Some, that's something. Da hat er ein Thema gerührt, der gute Hans. Wir haben vor ein, vor ein paar Jahren, you remember, everyone was so angry that you hadn't published a Sebastian Bergman book for several years. Jetzt kommt erstmal Sebastian Bergmann wieder, dieser unglaubliche Typ, because the last book ended in such a way that everyone was shocked, including me. I love this character because he's very, very strange. And so um, now you're going on with this, and I'm, I'm so curious. I wish I could read Swedish. And then yeah, the next Hannah book will come. So do you have an idea how many books you will write about Hannah? No, I don't, uh, but we do, we are going to write two more about Sebastian and then mm -hmm. that series is finished. So, mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm going to write about Hannah as, for as long as I and the readers uh, think it's fun. So at least two, probably more. Um, I'd say, yeah, you know, no, many books. Four, Maybe. five, six, I don't know, but... Ten, you know, the Scandinavians always write ten. You don't we're gonna go, We're going to go on for a while. Well, Mickey mm -hmm. and I has just started, has decided to finish Sebastian Bergman after eight. So uh, we're breaking the rules there. Ach, dieses, diese Schweden, eigentlich schreiben Skandinavier mal zehn Bücher, aber manchmal auch mehr. Aber diesmal wird bei Sebastian Bergmann nach acht aufgehört, was ich bedauere. Aber dafür kommt Hanna wieder ins Spiel. Und äh, da werden wir noch viele, viele... Bücher erleben. So I guess poor Haparanda in the end will be a, a place where everyone thinks it's full of murderers and criminals like poor Venice with Donna Leon. Nothing ever happens there now as long as she's been writing for 30 books now. So many murders. So what's the, what does Haparanda say to that? Oh absolutely so far but I mean not many people have read the book yet. It's, yeah. it's it was published last in yeah four days ago mm -hmm. uh, but so far they have been very positive about uh, me writing about them. Uh, so uh, I'm going up there next week to talk about the book and uh, yeah, just to visit. And uh, no, they've been very positive. I think they are, they are quite pleased with this actually. Uh, I guess there will I be many that, I hope tools. that feeling stays yeah. after they read it as well. So. No, but I guess uh, Hans, that a lot of people will travel up to Haparanda to see to see the nature uh, or see if they can find something that people are chasing in the book. So I guess you're, you'll be the, the ambassador for Haparanda in the future. I, I hope so too. Um, and I mean, it is, I mean, if, if you're abroad, 
uh, maybe a little more exotic, but I'd say if you put a if you put a blind map mm. on a, to a hundred Swedes and ask them to to place Haparanda on it, I'd say you have not all of them are going to make it. So it's it's quite a kind of a forgotten exotic place, even for a Swedish reader to to be honest. As you don't, you don't is... often hear about it. You don't often hear about it in in mm. Sweden. Mm. Also Haparanda wird jetzt allmählich auf die Landkarte gerückt und die Leute dort wissen noch nichts von ihrem Glück als Stadt, wo noch oft gemordet wird. Aber auf jeden Fall wird es ja immer noch wieder auftauchen und es ist ein Ort weit weg. Vielleicht wird Hans Rosenfeld der Botschafter für Haparanda, wie manche Schriftsteller für andere Orte. I enjoyed it very, very much. Hans, I thought it was a great book and I've, I have the, you know, the a very sort of meager reading copy, but it was so good. I took it to my bed. It fell off my bed at night because it's sort of a, it's, it's loose pages more or less. Thank you so much. And what I really hope, and I think everyone in Germany hopes that next year, you can, uh, you and M M Mike can come back to Germany and we meet again live on the stage. And I hope so too. I was booked at, at some of the, of the of quite a few of the crime yeah. festivals and they were all cancelled and yeah. yeah it really broke my heart because you know we love to come there and we love to meet you and our readers yeah yeah so nächstes Jahr wird Hans und Mike, Michael werden zusammenkommen wieder und werden ihre Bücher vorstellen wir freuen uns alle the Mott am Helwig for example one of the places you usually go will be yeah. there next year Hopefully. All the best to you. All the best and lots of love also to Mika when you meet him ah, and will, um, to your okay. wife, of course. Yeah, and, yes, I will. I will tell that to said aloud. And this book will come out. Das Buch kommt am 13. Oktober heraus in Deutschland. Die Ausgabe 13. Oktober ganz bald und zwei Wochen noch und dann könnt ihr können alle lesen über Hannah und Katja und den Wolf Sommer. Thank you so much and have a wonderful time. See you again next year then. Thank you. It was lovely talking to you. Bye bye. Yes, I hope we talk again. Bye bye. Thank okay. you very much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.